Welcome back to The Breakfast. Gunmen raided Tungan Maje, a suburb of Abuja, early on Thursday, abducting an unspecified number of residents. According to eyewitnesses, at least 20 people were kidnapped after prolonged shooting in the community that live, or lies near Zuba. The attack is coming weeks after reports suggested that members of the extremist group Boko Haram had infiltrated the federal capital territory. Police confirmed the attack, saying 10 people were kidnapped and five rescued. And to talk more on the security situation in Nigeria, we have a former director of the DSS, uh, Dennis Amakri, and a security expert, Kabir Adamu, uh, in Abuja. Thank you both for joining us. Thank you. Good morning. I'm going to start with uh, Mr. Amakri. Uh, do you see any connection here with the earlier warning about imminent attacks uh, uh, from security agencies? Well, yeah, um, of course, uh, it is very, very apparent. Uh, and then, of course, it tells us uh, a simple, teaches us a simple lesson that uh, effective security is, uh, is, is supposed to be proactive. And um, if, uh, when you react to things, then uh, it is not security at all, because this particular intelligence was out. Although uh, the letter of the customs was not properly channeled, it was not even uh, classified, uh, so many people believe that it was nonsense. Uh, but uh, at the same time, the security agencies would have taken it because no information is useless information. They would have run with it and then, of course, proactively do something about it. But uh, here we are with uh, all the attacks that uh, happened uh, two days ago. Well, proactive instead of reactive. Uh, Kabira Adamo, let's speak with you now. Of course, um, follow up to that question. Why, why do you, what would you think, in spite of the seeming accumulation of intelligence, uh, the security agents could not void this very bold attack? Uh, firstly, the, uh, there is a common factor that unfortunately we've not been able to solve um, what are called ungoverned spaces. Um, yeah. These are forested parts, sometimes mountainous parts, that frankly our current security architecture does not have a solution for. And if you look at that letter, the letter by the customs, which you know sp speaks about four or five ungoverned spaces where it says um, you know terrorists uh, have camps in. So even this um, attack we're speaking about, the Tungamaji attack, if you look at the close vicinity of Tungamaji, it's an ungoverned space. Uh, the Zuma Rock is there. Next to the Zuma Rock, it's a vast un ungoverned space. And these are the places where these gunmen, unknown gunmen, they could be terrorists, they could be bandits, they could be criminals, um, used for, as havens. And then, of course, they use them to carry out their attacks. So, so long as we do not have a solution for these ungoverned spaces, that is how, unfortunately, we'll be witnessing this type of incidents. Can you quickly just share with me, before I'm going to move to Mr. Macri in a bit, but uh, Cabrera, Adamu, quickly share with me what you would call a solution to ungoverned spaces, quickly. Uh, one, of two, one of two things. Um, within the security architecture, the, the Ministry of Agriculture has a department on forestry, and um, I think that they are called forest guards, or perhaps when I was young, they were called forest guards. Currently, I do not know what they are. And I know that every year in the budget, there is a provision for that particular uh, uh, department of government. They are the ones who have responsibility for occupying those ungoverned spaces. Unfortunately, there is the lacuna in our constitution. Most of those um, spaces belong to state governments, and state governments don't have um, are not linked to this particular department. I do not know if within the state government security architecture they have personnel that can occupy those ungoverned spaces. But beyond that, we need to deploy technology. Um, there are different types of technology that you can use to put surveillance because the determining factor is surveillance. So that even if it's an ant that moves in that forest, you know that an ant is moving. What more of men, uh, 20, 30, 40 of them on motorcycles, sometimes three persons on one motorcycle moving from those on government spaces and we don't even know that they are moving. Sometimes we hear that even helicopters go to drop weapons in those on government spaces and there is no surveillance cap capability that would tell you uh, what, what is in those forests. So yeah, technology as well as human resources can be used to 
uh, you know, put surveillance on those on government spaces. All right, fantastic. Uh, Mr. Makri, back to you. First of all, these guys operated unchallenged, according to reports, for hours. And almost 48 hours after, we still don't have an update on the specific number of residents that were abducted. What does this say or tell about the level of responsiveness of our security agents? Well, um, you know, I have to uh, further pursue the idea that uh, Dr. Kabira has brought, uh, which is the government spaces. That uh, is our major issue right now in Nigeria. Um, you know, the, even the biggest of government spaces we have right now are the borders, which are very, very, people call them porous borders. I don't call them porous borders. I call them no border, you know, because they are so open that people can just walk in and out of uh, the place without uh, any hindrance. And it is true here that you have all these different elements coming through with arms and ammunition, with all kinds of drugs, with all kinds of, you know, so it's uh, a situation where um, we really have to wake up to it. Because I know we play a lot of lip services to it. Uh, we play a lot of lip services to it. We're on top of it. We're going to take care of it. And, uh, you know, even the intelligence is not taken care of. Uh, so let's do something about it. The technology to, to, to secure these borders are not out of this world. They are not, uh, 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 they are just on the shelf, you know, and they are in the market. So why can't we decide to get these things and let them be effective for us? All right, I'm going back to Kabira Damo. Same question. Um, uh, we're talking now about the responsiveness of the police. Um, it's, it's been more than 48 hours. Still no update on the specific number of uh, persons that were uh, abducted. Um, what what, what pink picture does this paint, basically, about the responsiveness of our security agents? Uh, well, in this instance, um, from the uh, information available to me, I know the police was called and they, they responded. Um, uh, from what we know, they deployed from both Niger State and from within Abuja. But they are challenged um, for you to have speedy response. In security, we say between five and seven minutes is what you expect for rapid response. But in this instance, these guys operated for longer than, than I think 30 minutes to 45 minutes without that type of adequate response. Uh, what are the challenges? One of them is transportation. Um, for yes, it's, it's easy to move from, let's say, uh, Ab the city of Abuja to Tungamaji. But then what happens from Tungamaji into the forested parts? And I, I don't think there's any policeman currently at night that will go into the, the, those ch security challenge. Uh, on government spaces that we're, we're talking about. Why? Because they do not have the, the requisite equipment that will allow them to go into those locations. So um, communication is a, a challenge. Transportation is another challenge. And then the requisite gear that would allow them to deploy into those on government spaces, they, they don't have it. Um, all you need to do is look at an average policeman and you realize he's it, not properly equipped to go into such security challenged areas. Um, the type of equipment that would allow access to those on government spaces, unfortunately, are lacking. And so therein lies our challenge. All right. And um, Dennis Amakri, do you also think security has taken a back bench uh, in the light of the COVID-19 pandemic? Or, you know, could that just be an excuse for security agencies? Uh, it's not an excuse because uh, whether there is COVID-19 or not, uh, the security agencies have to do their job uh, because um, everybody was under lockdown. Uh, but uh, Boko Haram was not under lockdown. Uh, they were operating. And of course, uh, the security agencies, the army, especially the military, was uh, after them uh, during this particular period. And uh, of course, the strikes, we are aware, during the lockdown, there were some strikes that happened in the Northwest and even in the Northeast. So um, security cannot take a backbench. The only thing we have to do is that we have to pay a better attention to our security agencies. They are doing their best, but you can see that the best is not good enough. Uh, and why? Because uh, technologically, you have to deal with it. And then, of course, they have to synergize because suppose we know, now that we know that these, uh, what do they call them, the bandits were somewhere in the bush uh, around Abuja, um, they would have synergized with the Air Force. The Air Force would have uh, gone on surveillance uh, sorties and then looked around. But... Um, 
All this uh, synergy is not used. And then, of course, the equipment for even the foot soldiers is not there. So these are things, I think it's a wake-up call for us to start thinking about these things seriously. Kabir Adam, um, what would you say, I mean, you've already spoken about, um, you know, where security agencies may uh, lack with regards to manpower and training and equipment, but is there anything that you maybe could have suggested that could be done to prevent this latest attack with what we currently have? Um, well, it's um, synergy, really. Uh, the security agencies individually are stretched, uh, but if they work together, then the, the, the product and the effectiveness will be better. Um, and and um, Denis Amakri has given examples of, of that, where the community is intertwined with security to the extent that um, they are able to inform ahead. Because remember that even in Tungamaji, we are told that some, level, some form of surveillance was done by the bad guys. They came there, did their surveillance before eventually they carried out the attack. So if during a, the level of uh, the, the period of surveillance, someone in that community had informed the appropriate security agencies, perhaps even the informant would have been arrested. And then, of course, maybe the, the, the additional deployment of security agencies within that environment would have prevented the attack. But synergy, um, and then, of course, rapid response or reaction would have really reduced, even if it doesn't prevent, it would reduce the consequences of the incident. Uh, back to Mr. Macri. Um, the whole of the FCT, uh, I, I believe, since these uh, information you know, were released, um, must have gone into some level of panic, uh, residents of the FCT mostly. What advice would you give them for personal safety while they hope for better response from security agencies uh, at a time like this? And also, you may also want to quickly speak on why the FCT? Well, why the FCT is very apparent. That's the capital city. And uh, no, in, the, in the olden days, uh, if there is a war, if they capture the capital city, then they've captured you, everybody surrenders. Although that's not uh, how it goes these days. But um, of course, uh, people in the FCT are going to be very, very worried. And uh, how do you talk to them? Uh, I think uh, most of them, I think, our national orientation agencies, or even the security public relations area uh, people, should go around and uh, be um, telling the people that they have to be situationally aware. You see, security is not just for the security agents alone. Um, it, there is no magic about security. It is what you see and say that will help uh, the security agencies in doing what they have to do. So um, they should be situationally aware uh, anything they see, they should tell. Uh, the, because normally, there must be surveillance. And uh, they should be able to report that to the security agents to get uh, themselves ready. And I have to say, again, over and over again, the security agencies should not discard any kind of information they get. Because it is necessary. No information is useless. Uh, Kabir Damu, finally, uh, we're going to end uh, with this one. I want to know what you think um, might be happening in the next uh, I mean, a few days. Are you expecting further attacks? And also, why kidnapping? Um, kidnapping is one of the methods that uh, these groups use to generate funds. Um, at the end of the day, they are likely to you know, ask for ransom. And then if the ransom is paid, they use it to continue their operation. They could buy weaponry with it. They could buy tactics. They could buy access. So that's really the why uh, regarding kidnapping. Yeah. It could also be for forceful conscription. They, they need members. So sometimes they target um, communities and then uh, youths or women that they will use for labor within, within their camps. Um, we, we are not yet sure of the identity of who they took. Um, so if we knew the identity, we could profile them and give you an indication of why they, why they took them. But it's, one, it's going to be one of those two reasons. Um, do we, are we expecting further attacks? I hate to be a harbinger of bad news. Like, until we occupy those ungoverned spaces, until we stop them from using those ungoverned spaces as havens, then unfortunately, there is likely to be more attacks. The vulnerability of the communities, especially border communities, to the ungoverned spaces makes them easy targets for attack. 
So there is a need for us to change the security architecture, rejig it in such a manner that those government spaces are occupied. Uh, and then that way we stop these bad guys from access to the ungoverned spaces. Um, and then, of course, we protect our communities better. Kabir Adamu and uh, Dennis Amakri, thank you both for speaking with us. Thank you for Thanks. having us.